Hello everybody, this is the programme Capital Ideas Life and I'm Mike Gibson. The capital of Russia is a huge metropolis. Here, each and every day, there are a great many different happenings. In our programme today, we'll tell you who helps Muscovites in emergency situations and how they take care of their safety. Today on the programme, how the Moscow 112 service works. Moscow Fire Safety, who protects the capital's skyscrapers from fire. The Fire and Rescue Center Training Ground, how emergency responders and firefighters are trained in Moscow. One one two Moscow operator two four seven. What's your emergency? A traffic accident with no casualties. Are people hurt? This is operator two fifty nine calling an ambulance. Stay on the line. Don't hang up. One one two Moscow emergency service operator Mike. What's your emergency? Help is on its way. Please wait. Every day, this 112 emergency service receives about 17,000 calls from all around Moscow. This means that people urgently need help. By simply dialing the short number 112, you can report any incident that has occurred in Moscow. Just one call and the operator will determine who responds. Emergency services, paramedics, firefighters, or all of them at once. You can call this single number for free from any phone, even if your smartphone doesn't have a SIM card. When a call is received at the 112 service operator's workplace, an incident card is automatically created. The 112 service operator then enters information into the card. This card is automatically sent to the services that are responsible for responding to the incident. On average, it takes the operator no more than 90 seconds to process the card. The operator's workplace is equipped with three displays. On one of them, the operator can fill out an incident card. The second display allows the operator to immediately determine the caller's location on a map. The third display is for the operator to conveniently find necessary background information. Also, all operators wear headsets so that both hands are free to enter information into the incident card as quickly as possible. The 112 service has been operating in Moscow since 2012. In the Russian capital, this short number works in the same way as its foreign equivalents. If you dial 911 while in Moscow, the call will automatically be forwarded to 112. This is designed to make it convenient for foreigners to dial their familiar emergency phone numbers and still get the help they need. An operator's shift lasts a full day. At the moment, this call center has 75 employees taking calls at the same time. All of them are educated to degree level and many of the operators speak foreign languages. Since 2020, we have been providing training for English-speaking operators every year, during which they learn special vocabulary. And the main part is the development of speaking and listening skills, because more often we are approached by foreigners for whom English is not their native language. Therefore, the operator is faced with various difficulties of pronunciation. It is the responsibility of the 112 service operator to promptly receive a call about an accident, correctly process it and redirect it to the response service. After that, the staff of the Fire and Rescue Center of Moscow takes over. The Fire and Rescue Center of Moscow was established in 2008. Today, there are some 40 units in Moscow. But where do they teach the profession of a firefighter rescuer? And how do ordinary employees of these units work? Find out in our next story. Operators of the Fire and Rescue Center of Moscow and operators of the 112 service monitor the situation in the city around the clock and are always ready to help. 
These organizations are structural subdivisions of the Moscow Department of Civil Defense, Emergency Response, and Fire Safety. As we are a professional emergency rescue unit, we have a higher percentage of non-firefighting missions. We provide all kinds of social assistance and medical services, up to the point that if a Moscow resident breaks a mercury thermometer, for example, our unit is sent out and we conduct a special set of procedures. The center's first three units were created in 2008 to ensure the safety of the Lefortova and Gagarinsky tunnels on the third ring road. Today, it is the largest emergency rescue division in the Russian capital. In Moscow at the moment, we have 40 units. There are 27 active fire and rescue squads, seven emergency rescue squads, and a squad for fighting fires on bodies of water. This ship, the Colonel Chernyshov, has a squad of engineering technicians. They have front loaders, excavators, heavy engineering equipment for the removal of debris and cave-ins. We also have a canine unit, which is part of the rescue squad. Therefore, the range of the tasks we perform is quite broad. Every day, about 500 employees of the Fire and Rescue Center are on duty throughout Moscow. During this time, firefighting and rescue units attend to more than 150 emergency calls. And since 2010, firefighting dispatches have totaled more than 100,000 and 1,940 people have been rescued. The Fire and Rescue Squad number 207 is located on the territory of Moscow City. It is one of the biggest units in Europe. Let's go and take a look inside and see how everything's organized. Attention! Front and center. Comrade squad leader, shift change complete. Senior duty shift reporting for duty. Today we have three vehicles on duty for the PTZ, fire tactical exercises. At the moment, there is a medical service vehicle on special duty and also the PTP-28 vehicle. More than 200 people work in this squad. Each specialist has two jobs, fireman and emergency responder. The working shift of firefighters and rescuers starts at 9 a.m. in the morning with a parade. After working for a day, the firefighters change shift. A new group comes on duty. If there are no general questions or announcements, the on-duty shift is on call. In general, the fire department has a daily schedule approved for the day. And in addition to the schedule, there's an approved timetable of classes. The topics of these classes focus on technical training, operational service, and first aid. In other words, we study all these things from morning till night, if there are no emergency trips. During the lineup, there is a check of the appearance, equipment, and uniforms of the firefighters. The requirements for all firefighters in Moscow are the same. The main attribute of a firefighter and an emergency responder is, of course, his firefighting clothing. They are designed specifically to protect the body and allow the firefighter to stay on the scene for a long time in high temperatures. Such a set of clothes can withstand temperature fluctuations from minus 40 to plus 300 degrees Celsius. The main elements of clothing are stacked so they can be put on in a precise order. When we get suited up, we always start with the pants. After that, the boots, jacket, belt and protective helmet must be put on. The firefighter has 29 seconds to do everything. Mike, Mike, how about you do the same and try to put on the firefighting clothes yourself? Okay. Uh -huh. 
да, so, все, одеваем сапоги. Так, let's put on our boots. Так, put the jacket on. Да, через голову продеваем рукава. Head, the sleeves. Все. Okay, the belt. Так. Ready. Well done, Mike. Вы хорошо справились. Each Moscow fire and rescue unit is assigned its own response zone. The size of the area is determined by the following. The fire and rescue unit must be able to arrive at the scene of the accident within a maximum of 10 minutes. The, ooh, right. the fire alarm means that the firemen now have to quickly go off to the call. The firemen only have one minute to gather all their things and leave. In this time, they need to get downstairs and put on their firefighting clothes. And get into the fire engine. The fire and rescue unit number 207 was created to extinguish fires and conduct rescue operations in a response zone which includes the skyscrapers of the Moscow City Business District. The height of some of the towers reaches more than 300 meters. It is a real challenge for the firefighters. After all, in the event of a fire, an ordinary ladder and a hose won't cut it. Firefighters in their arsenal are armed with a special ladder that has a lift. It weighs more than 20 tons. These ladders are designed to lift the crew to a great height, evacuate people and deliver water, foam and special equipment to the area of the fire. And very quickly, we can actually rise up to a height of almost 50 meters. That's practically the 16th floor. However, emergency personnel often have to work even higher. For this purpose, firefighters have a telescopic elevator, the TP-90. In its cradle, you can evacuate three people at once. The elevator operation is regulated by a special automatic system which controls the position of the machine relative to the horizon, the load on the elevator, the angle of inclination of the ladder, and the wind speed. If any of the parameters do not meet the safety requirements, the automation will prevent the elevator from operating. And this unique vehicle is the only one of its kind in Moscow. It is designed for smoke removal from large rooms, car tunnels, and other hard to reach places. All the necessary equipment for such a task is stored in these special container compartments and includes two motor and two electric fans. There is such a thing as tactical ventilation in a fire. It's designed so that the firefighters in gas masks can remove the products of combustion and penetrate to the source of the fire itself. And are all these containers changeable? Yes, this here is a mobile container on this vehicle. It's a smoke evacuation canister. But the main feature of this fire truck is a large mobile fan, the MGV-60. It can be used to spray water and foam from a distance of up to 40 meters. As we can see, it's not small. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the container is dismounted. 
It works autonomously, without a car. There's a special operator who operates it. At the decision of the fire chief, on his command, this vehicle can drive into the area, attach a high-rise extinguishing container, if the fire occurs in a high-rise building, and transport it to the site of the fire in the same way. We've arrived in the village of Aparinki. Here is located a special training ground for the preparation of firefighters and rescuers, and I will be able to take part in the training. At this training ground, emergency responders and firefighters practice for various situations where a person may need help. Whether it's a fire, or a man-made accident, or accidents on the water, or on a busy highway, circumstances can be very unpredictable. Here we have a large number of different simulators. This is a heat and smoke chamber where firefighters practice working in an unbreathable environment. There is a rubble complex where we practice different methods of rescuing people from under rubble using alpine equipment. There is a chemistry simulator where we practice rescue and emergency response at a chemical production facility. And that's not all. Here, for example, firefighters demonstrate the unusual capabilities of rescue equipment. The high water pressure with an abrasive material is capable of piercing any material, even metal. This is how the Cobra fire extinguishing unit works. Essentially, in this method, water is mixed with abrasive particles and is pumped under great pressure through a wall to a fire in hard-to-reach areas, leaving behind just a small inlet hole, only three to four millimeters. Today, the Cobra is considered to be one of the safest methods of extinguishing fires. But that cannot be said about the next test. First, it is necessary to wear special protective firefighting clothing. Whoa, it's kind of heavy. I'm wearing eight kilos right now. And that's not all. The breathing apparatus is still needed. To make sure the breathing apparatus is properly attached, you have to hold the valve with one hand and put your other hand behind your head. And it should be like this. And then it's all a blur. In the truest sense of the word, you have to move around practically by touch. In the labyrinth of the heat and smoke chamber, these are conditions just like in a real fire. The smoke in the room, the limited space, and even cries for help. Thank you. That was really intense. Very cool. Then, having donned our climbing gear, we climb the tower. According to Russian law, if the ascent exceeds five meters, you must use a means of safety. In this case, you use these two carabiners. It's two things, like this and like that. Yes, great. Try clipping them on. Like this, right? Yes, both of them. Click it in. And both, right away. You are performing the ascent. But you always have to have one of the carabiners clipped to the step. So you move this one and you climb... Okay, understood. ...one at a time, like this. According to the scenario, at the very top of the tower, there is an injured person waiting for help. Our task is to lower the person to the ground where he will be given first aid. Alexei is now safely on the ground. I've successfully completed my task. Super. I really like the work of a rescuer. 
the next task is to rescue an accident victim. According to the scenario, the driver is trapped in his car and can't get out on his own. In order to help him, to save him, you and I will need to open this door, remove the middle bar, remove the back of the seat, and use the board to carefully remove him and transfer him to the medical team so they can help him. And now we are cordoning off the accident scene to make it safer. Okay, understood. We're securing the vehicle so it doesn't go anywhere else. Understood. Here's a fire extinguisher in case there's a fire. And you and I will proceed with the rescue operation. An emergency rescuer vehicle equipped with all the necessary equipment had already arrived at the scene of the accident. The rescue squad has begun its work. Michael, we're removing the door. And switch it on like this? Turn it back on, where the green marks are. Pasha? Like this, right? Hold it. And then open. Got it. Now the lower one. Like this, yes? Yes. Got it. Now that was easy. Now to the back door. Like this? Again? Yes. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Yes, you got it. We have a set of hydraulic tools, extractors, pliers, special devices to cut the pedals. Because if a person's feet are jammed by the pedals, there's not much room and you need special devices. If a person is wearing clothes, you have to take them by their clothes. It's clear, got it. That way, the load is redistributed and you avoid this kind of movement. You grab him by his clothes and you pull him onto the board. Yeah, that's it. Understood. Do it like this. Come on, let's go. One, two, three. Wow, that was hard work, but we did everything very quickly and very precisely. And now we're off to the next task. This task's conditions simulate a rescue in a chemical plant. In this module, using special software, you can create various situations that occur at facilities where hazardous chemicals may be stored. Responders work in special protective suits. You hold it by the strap and you pull it over like this. This outfit is much lighter and thinner than normal firefighting clothing. It does not protect from high temperatures. Its purpose is to protect a person from the release of hazardous substances. Copy. Victim located. At the end of the day, a real foam attack awaited our crew at the Apadinki training area. At the site, which simulates a warehouse of flammable liquids, there was a leak and a fire, which, under the guidance of the training center specialists, we handled successfully. All these are just a small part of the emergencies that can be practiced here at the training ground. Rescuers and first responders of Moscow Fire and Rescue Center not only hone their skills here, but also compete with each other. Fire and rescue sports and multi-event competitions among Moscow fire departments and fire rescue squads are often held here. The capital's national team also prepares for the all-Russian and international competitions here.
The rescuers' work shift is not yet over. New challenges await for them, as well as new dangerous situations. But our programme is coming to an end. I'm Mike Gibson. We'll see you in the next show. Take care of yourself, everybody, and goodbye. Thank you.